All right, happy Friday to you. Uh, so we've got a trade to talk about. Um, we are less than a week from the trade deadline. This is kind of the big, the first big, I guess, what we could call it a blockbuster trade. I'm expecting more, I think, as I've talked about it before, uh, with a free agency class that's average at best, not much cap space. Here's where teams are going to be able to improve their roster. We'll see what's next, but the Clippers and Trailblazers made a deal. Um, Portland is acquiring uh, Keon Johnson, Justice Winslow, Eric Bledsoe, a 2025 for a second round pick that was acquired in the Luke Kennard trade. That pick is from Detroit. And the Clippers get Robert Covington. We've all talked about Robert Covington and kind of his trade value. Where does he go? Um, and Norman Powell. It's interesting. It's an interesting from from both sides of it, and I'm, we'll talk about it um, in depth. I want to start with the Clippers here. When I wrote in the trade guide, there was probably a different ways that they could have gone. Paul George is out. Kawhi Leonard is out. They're likely a playing team. Do they shed money? A player like Serge Ibaka and save $35, $40 million. Do you kind of do a trimming around the edges? Do you use your um, trade exception and... I want to give Steve Ballmer, their owner, a lot of credit here. I think a lot of owners in this league would have said, we're a playing team, I want to save $40 million. They did the opposite here. What the Clippers did was they added to their luxury tax bill $19 million. Goes up to about um, you know $112 million, their, their tax penalty. Uh, 112.9. They were at 93.9. You know, they add $19 million. You've improved the roster. Norman Powell got a contract, five years, uh, $90 million um, when he signed it last year. Robert Covington is a um, going to be an unrestricted free agent. He's got bird rights. You can exceed the, the cap to bring him back. They are committed to spending if there's going to be a competitive roster. And I give... I call this the Ty Lue trade. Ty Lue has done an incredible job with this roster, keeping it afloat, competitive. You saw that against the Lakers. You saw that out east when they went 4-4 four and four on, that, on that road trip. I think if, if this team was 18-30, and 30, I don't know if this trade is going to happen. But because they're in the thick of this playing, because Paul George and Kawhi Leonard are eventually going to come back, I don't know about this year. But certainly for next year, you're going to need to surround them with players. And when I look at, certainly with Reggie Jackson, uh, Nick Batum's got a player option. Luke Kennard, now you add um, Powell. We'll see what happens with Covington as far as when he gets into, into free agency. Um, three players that are going out that Keon Johnson's a nice player. You know, a young player, draft, former dra first round draft pick from last year. We have all talked about Justice Winslow as far as that tease when he's healthy, that wing. Um, I think he's a rotational player. I think he still, can still help. And Eric Bledsoe, since they've gotten in the, in the trade, really has not done much. And he's got a partial guarantee for next year. I did not see him part of the future. So I like it for the Clippers. I understand why the Clippers did it. As I said, I give them a ton of credit. Heading into the deadline now, uh, they've got this $8.2 million trade exception. They've got a roster spot. I wouldn't be surprised if they keep that open and Amir Coffey is eventually converted into a two-way contract or, or into a regular contract. He's on a two-way right now. And remember, two ways are not eligible for the playoffs. So he's given him some nice minutes off the bench. You convert him. Now he's eligible. Um, they've, As I said, they've got that trade exception, but it's, it will cost them as far as from a salary standpoint. And do I think the Clippers are done? I, I don't. I think they are going to, you know, shake the trees and see if something else falls. And even if it means adding to their $112 million luxury tax, because as you've seen with this deal, ownership is willing to spend. Are they likely a team that's going to get knocked off in the first round to um, Golden State? Likely. But this deal really sets them up for for the future um, from, from where I see it. So... Really good deal for from the Clippers' uh, perspective here. Portland, okay. The people out there are probably saying, like, why would Portland do this? Well, two things here. Joe Cronin, their interim GM, 
this is his stamp on this roster. And there's going to be a part two and a part three to this. And I got a couple texts saying, well, eventually they, they just traded basically Gary Trent for Norman Powell that turned into Winslow, Bledsoe, Johnson in a future second. And I, and I said, yeah, I get it on the surface, but Joe Cronin wasn't the decision maker there. Neil O'Shea, this is Joe Cronin's deal, right? This is how he sees the roster being fit. Let's start for a couple things here. Is it a salary dump on the surface? Yes. It gets Portland under the luxury tax. Uh, they're about 906,000 uh, below. They are going to stay that there. That means they'll get a distribution about 10 to $11 million. But I'm interested to see what is next here. And what I say what is next is, is it CJ McComb? Do you take that McComb contract and break it up into two or three uh, players? I updated the trade guide. I updated the... Um, the roster breakdown, the trade assets, the draft picks. I've Everything's updated online. You can go there. And what I did for Portland is the trades we'd like to see. Josh Hart, Tomas Sadoransky, Jackson Hayes, a future one. For me, that would be, it's not sexy, but it has appeal to me. If I am Portland getting three kind of, you know, at least with Hart and, and, uh, and Hayes and you get a first, replenish your draft assets, and you kind of start building around that. I think that's going to be the next domino, not that deal. That, that's a hypothetical. I don't want to be aggregated here. But that type of deal where you take that McComb contract and you maybe you break it up into two, uh, two or three players. So I think that's going to be an interesting thing to follow. Cer certainly with Nurkic, how does he fit in? He's an unrestricted free agent, but with him and Anthony Sinem, Simons as free agents, what the Powell deal was, you get off Norm's money, and now you can bring both players back and still stay under luxury tax next year, and maybe you build, you keep on building this roster out. Um, so I would say unlikely Nurkic goes. I'm interested to see what happens with Eric Bledsoe. He's got a $3.9 million guaranteed next year. As of the day of the trade deadline, he's owed about $9.8 million. Uh, 5.9 left on this year's contract, 3.8 uh, nine, as I mentioned, for next year. Does um, Portland entertain buyout talks with him? Do they let it play out and use Bledsoe as a um, as an asset, as far as a guy on an expiring contract? I think that's going to be the uh, the player to keep an eye on here. So there's going to be a part two and a part three to this for for Trailblazers fans. And I'm not I'm not going to jump on the the grave of Joe Cronin because it was. Theoretically, on paper, it is it is a salary dump, right? It's a salary dump. It's basically Keon Johnson and that second, and we'll we'll probably take a flyer on uh, on Winslow for you know the next two years. He's got two years left. Uh, Johnson's got three more after here. We'll see what happens with Bledsoe here. But as I said, there's going to be a part two, whether it be Bledsoe down the road, whether it be Winslow, whether it be McComb to this deal. This this roster is far from finished and i'm reading the comments people are like well geez, you guys get to trade dame now right trade dave there's a fire set like wait let's see what joe can do with the roster here you you you've started the process here we'll see what happens when we get closer to the deadline but as i said this is not a finished product far from fin um, uh, finished another thing here is i mentioned all the trade guides are updated um, roster breakdowns go online take a look at we're going to be continually tra updating everything um the cap numbers and luxury tax numbers uh, projections came out. 121 for the cap projection. That means a $2 million uh, increase. 147 for the luxury tax. I don't see it moving the needle that much for cap space teams. San Antonio, Memphis, Detroit. I don't, I don't see a fourth or fifth team jumping into that mix. I think what's going to be interesting is what happens with the hard cap sign and trades. Uh, that gives t teams a little bit more of a buffer when you go from a hard cap of 151 to 153. Every dollar matters. So that's a little bit of a recap on the uh, Clipper um, uh, Portland trade. We'll do more of these videos uh, as trades come in. Hopefully you have a great Friday. Enjoy your weekend and, and stay safe out there.